welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today I have a keto grocery haul. I went to Kroger. I needed a few things for the week. So I thought I would share. I picked up two bags of rice cauliflower. I got some no sugar added ketchup and some pure horseradish. Little heads up. If you get the pure, there's no sugar in it. The ingredients are literally horseradish vinegar and salt the prepared has other ingredients and there's like less than one carb in that so i'm going to make some shrimp cocktail sauce because i have some shrimp got some heavy whipping cream these are the really the only hot dogs i have found that are affordable and clean so they were two for six i'm going to start stocking up this summer when i'm going to coupon and shove a bunch in my freezer because i really enjoy them I got some tofu shirataki noodles. I'm kind of hungry for some chicken soup. Um, for meals next week, I'm going to have some pork tenderloin. I'm going to cook that up with some sauerkraut. <sighs> Guys, it's the first green tomato of the season. I love fried green tomatoes. So that's going to be dinner tonight. The boys got a treat. They love this tender turkey. It just doesn't come in the multi-packs that I normally buy. I grabbed an avocado. I think I'm going to make some guac. Limes were three for a dollar. So I grabbed three limes. And I got for a snack, I'm going to try this for travel and for home, some nori, basically, a roasted seaweed. My total bill came to like $44, but I bought this duster, which was eight. So I did come in under budget this week. I'll bring you along when I prepare the pork and then the side of sauerkraut. Hi guys, I decided tonight that I'm gonna make some tortillas, um, keto style, so I thought I'd bring you along. Um, I got this recipe from delish.com. I will link it below in the description. Um, but quickly, it has one cup of almond flour, a quarter of a cup of coconut flour, I, sub I substituted oat fiber, two teaspoons of xanthan gum, I just used one. I don't like heavy xanthan gum, it makes it slimy. A teaspoon of bacon powder, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, three teaspoons of lime juice, one egg, and a tablespoon of water. And we're going to put it in the food processor so I will show you what I'm doing. So give me a second and I will relocate you. Okay, so in here I've got all the dry ingredients and I gave it a whiz. Now what I'm going to do is this is the egg and lime juice. I'm going to add this in while it's running so i'll save your ears um this is the xanthan gum that i get i buy it at walmart in the gluten-free section and these little packets there's quite a bit in here and then my baking powder now this will get kneaded and sit in the refrigerator for a little bit and then here's the extra water that it calls for so i'm going to turn it on and i'm going to add this beaten egg and the lime juice first okay I'm back now what it says in the directions and I should have been more prepared take a piece of plastic wrap I'm assuming it's going to be super sticky. Let me get my limes out of the way. And then you're going to dump it all in the center here, and then you're going to knead it with your hands in the plastic. Oops. So let me grab a spatula. Again, life is always challenging when you got one arm here. Although I'm doing much better in mobility wise and I've got some better um, reach. I do a little bit of physical therapy every day. Nothing too crazy. Um, he doesn't want me utilizing the muscle completely yet, um, but I can use my wrist and arm a little bit. So that's good. All right. So this one in, and I'm just going to Kind of ball it up and then you knead it like this for a couple minutes 
And then this whole ball is going to go into the refrigerator for about 10 to 15 minutes to let the coconut flour, or in my case, oat fiber, which they both act very similar. I'm gonna let them, um, just trying to lift it down better so it doesn't squeeze out on me. They both act as an absorbent, like a flower. But I'm trying to get the air out, there we go. So you're just gonna kind of mush it and squish it and you're like kneading it like you would a bread here. It'll be easier for me to use the counter and less algae. And then I'll let it sit in the refrigerator for 10 minutes and then I'll bring you back when I'm ready to form them into tortillas. All right, I took my dough out of the refrigerator and it was approximately eight ounces I weighed it separated into eight one ounce balls. Now I have a tortilla press, but you could totally do this between two pieces of parchment. This is just a gallon Ziploc bag cut in half, or I cut the sides off because the dough, it gets kind of sticky. But on here, I will show you how easy this is. And if you were using this with a rolling pin, same concept. I just happened to have bought this tortilla press for this purpose. And it was like, I think $13 on Amazon. It was not expensive. And look what you get. Look how thin that is. So, you get a pretty thin tortilla. I'll leave that there. I've cooked one up. It is, this one I think dried out a little too much, but it is pliable. Um, you know, tastes like a tortilla. Now, what you do is you throw it in a pan for just a couple seconds, literally on each side. I have the skillet up pretty high. And you just do it, depending on how hot you get your pan. You do it for just a couple seconds on each side. You're really just trying to dry it up a little bit. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing here. Let me bring you over, friends. Oops. Can you see? There we go. So yeah, you're just doing a couple seconds on each side. And now I have a tortilla that's, you know, pliable, bendable and cooked and that's it i'm gonna turn it up a little higher i can hear it i'll show you one more and it almost has a corn taste to it but i think the lime juice helps a lot with that definitely does not have any grit to it from the almond flour mm, it's actually very tasty but that's how I make my tortillas. And like I said, the recipe will be in the description box below. I'm not sure what I'm making for dinner tonight. Maybe some tacos. I do have some ground meat in the freezer. So I'm just gonna continue cooking these. I'll get eight out of this recipe. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed. Welcome back. Everybody, it is Sunday evening, and I'm getting ready to make my dinner. I have four pork chops. Now, I do brine my pork chops, meaning um, this morning I took two cups of water. I dissolved like a tablespoon of Lancato sweetener, um, some salt, maybe like a tablespoon of salt, and some garlic. And I dissolved it in the hot water, or the warm water, let it cool, and then I put them in a bag with the pork chops. So they won't be dry when they come out of the oven or the grill. What happens is they soak up that moisture, right? Because that's what we wanted to do. And then they, um, when they're cooking and they release their juices, they won't be so dry. So I do that, and it flavors them a little bit. I'm also sauteing back here some onions. I'm making some riced cauliflower, but I'll show you that in a minute. 
But right now, and then in this little container, I have, it's about a tablespoon of olive oil, some Dijon mustard, some garlic herbs stuff. And I'm just gonna smear it over these pork chops that I dried with a towel, you know, paper towel and salt and peppered both sides. I already did the other side. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some Parmesan and put them in the 400 degree oven for like 15 minutes and pull them out and they should be perfect and juicy and tender. And see, this is just like gonna add more flavor. And what's fun about the brine, you can do any flavoring that you want to it and it will just impart the pork because pork can be kind of boring. It will impart it. Oh, I put some apple cider vinegar in with it too. Let me turn you down a little bit. So I just painted that on and then I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan because I do keto guys. We don't do breadcrumbs, we do cheese. And that's good, I just finished off one of my containers that needed to be finished. And this is gonna go into the 400 degree oven, like I said, for approximately 15 minutes. I'm gonna rearrange it, I'll show you the rice, cauliflower rice. We set the timer. This is just, I mean, maybe a quarter of a yellow Spanish onion that I'm gonna saute in this pan. And when it's closer to being done, I feel like I'm gonna do like a little Asian stir fry rice to go with my pork chops. Um, so I'm gonna put a little minced, gin, ooh, minced ginger with it. Now garlic you wanna put in right before I add the rice because it will burn, but ginger will not. So a little minced ginger. Put this away and then I'll get out the soy sauce. We're going to add some soy to it, finish it off with some sesame oil, and then as soon as I'm ready to put the rice or the rice collie in, I'll add the garlic and just let that cook for a minute. Like I said, garlic burns super -de duper fast. So you really want to like put it in, let it cook for a minute, and then add your other ingredients. Because if it burns, it gets bitter. And we don't need that. So I'm going to let this sweat up for a few minutes, and then we'll add the rest. I'm going to grab some, some garlic now. You know how much I love my garlic, and I'm not going anywhere for the next couple days, so. Well, actually, that's not true. I have a doctor's appointment with my surgeon. <laughs> Coming up. All right. So you just want to kind of cook the cauliflower, like I said. No overcooking necessary. And the cauliflower will take a while to cook. So the onion will finish cooking. But that's not a lot. I mean, this is... That's it, because onions can be pretty carby. I buy the Spanish. I do not get the sweet onions. I avoid the dahlias and sweet onions. I get the Spanish. They have the least carbs. If I had some green onion, I would finish it with that, but I don't. All right, so that's doing its thing. I'm going to open up this pouch. And this is just right out of the freezer, cauliflower, cauliflower rice. And there's about 11 minutes on the pork chops, but I want them to come out and then sit, you know, come to room temperature. Not room temperature, but you want them to rest for a little bit to allow them, you know, the juices to redistribute. If you cut them right away out of the oven, all your juices will run on your cutting board and you'll end up with, um, dry pork and that's what we're trying to avoid too. Overcooking and not letting it rest will get you some dry, dry pork. Um, I did add some salt and pepper and then I'll add more at the end but because cauliflower is pretty bland but here we go. This is just gonna simmer away 
and my pork chops are cooking and I will show you everything when it is the next step which is I'm just gonna add soy sauce and sesame oil and then when this is gone I'm gonna buy the coconut aminos all right my rice is finishing up I just added some soy sauce to it Achoo, excuse me and salt and pepper now all I'm gonna do is turn it off and drizzle it with a little bit of sesame oil and I mean just a little bit this is a finishing oil just kind of gives it that Asian flavor stir that up and plate it up and then I will show you the finished product and it's going to be delicious and this is dinner tonight and probably the next couple days because that's kind of how I roll. So that's that. If I had some green onion, like I said, I would put some fresh greenery in here. Let's taste this. Make sure it has what I need. It's hot. Mmm. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. All right, we're going to let this cool. And then I'll plate it up and show you the finished product. All right, I'm finished with my dinner. And I'll let me get you a better view. So here is the collie rice. And look at the pork. Oh, it's so tender and juicy. Mmm, and delicious. Mmm. I will say the brining really does help. It helps keep it moist. Pork can be super dry. So that's it, guys. That was my keto grocery haul and cooking for the last couple days. And I will talk to you later. Bye.